Hey guys, Django here. Welcome to today's realistic review in which we are taking a look at the American P40s at 2.7 battle rating. The Warhawks not particularly excelling in any department but jack of all trades that are decent at most things can work in all three of the major fighter roles turn fighting, boom and zooming and energy fighting they're decent at all three of them not excelling nothing exceptional but it's a workhorse the the warhawk the p40s we have the e1 and the e and the f10 sorry that we look at today there are slight differences to these planes but they are very very similar when it comes to engine power and performance so there is that they are a joy to fly because i really love these jack of all trades in which you can switch between the three roles and do everything decently and not just be you know held in one role although that can be fun as well when you feel like it so before we get into it do like the video if you do enjoy it leave me a comment i always try to answer and if you are not subscribed yet what are you waiting for much more content is on the way and uh, just hit that subscribe button become part of the community also join me on my other platforms locals and rumble rumble is my backup channel for youtube and locals is where i share other content next to the war thunder stuff and you can also financially support me there if you would want to do that Highly appreciate you if you take the time to join me over there. Now, the P40s. We have been fighting a little bit in this match and it was an interesting match where my team was wiped out and I was left. Of course, I was side climbing. You need to take your time in a P40 to get to the right altitude where you can begin to wreak havoc on the enemy team. I was left with five opponents here, which I was facing by myself with a bomber ally that was back at base right now so uh, yeah i'm gonna have some fun go to work on these guys and see what we can do the maximum speed in these p40s at sea level without mech is 473 without web and 514 width at 4500 meters so go up to 432 without web and 455 width and finally at 6500 meters so go up to 408 without web and 417 with now these speeds were taken with the f10 uh, the engine power on both of these planes are quite similar so the e1 at the moment will be quite similar to this aside from that the speeds are in indicated airspeed without mech the top speed in a dive in this plane is 700 and 78 kilometers an hour before she redlines and 870 before she rips apart this plane is actually sleek enough to get to the rip speed easily it does keep accelerating in a dive and not a lot of drag on this plane when it comes to that to hold the acceleration down in the lower ends of the dive is that the effective dive speed what about control stiffening well control stiffening starts quite late in the roll rate at 500 kilometers an hour and the second tick in the aileron compression at around 650 this plane is not rolling very well in lower speeds but it becomes better and better until you run up to 400 kilometers an hour and then the ideal window runs around 400 to 550 when it comes to roll rate and after the 550 really the compression starts a little bit and you'll get a little bit of compression there the elevator compression is less extensive above 750 you'll notice a little bit of elevator compression but not a lot and it's still possible to get out of the dive so that is all within limits of acceptability the stall speed in this plane rise lies around 85 kilometers an hour which is quite good <coughs> for a plane at this battle rating so that is good it has a good control at lower speeds and um, thus a very nice stall speed and the handling there is also quite good firepower on the plane is good both of these planes both the e1 and the f10 run with six 12.7 millimeter m2 browning machine guns 281 rounds per gun on the f10 but the ammo loads are mixed on the E1. The inner pair has the most ammo and the outer pair has the least 
I believe it was 290 for the inner pair and 212 or something for the outer pair and something in between on the uh, middle pair but um, yeah the ammo loads in total are the same it's just with the E1 you have a little bit of more ammo on the inner side so you can shoot longer with two guns and the um, F10 has equal ammo on all the guns and uh, when the ammo is done it's done <coughs> what belt to use well the default belt is um, not usable for me on this on these planes it has ball ammo in it and that is quite useless but universal ground tracer and stealth are all quite useful the universal belt has three AP shells a tracer shell and an incendiary shell ground belt has a tracer shell with three AP rounds and then the tracer shell is uh, vice versa three tracer shells and one AP shell and then finally the stealth belt has uh, AP incendiary and another AP shell so three different shells all in all all of these uh, four belts are usable depending on what you want to use it for for ground attacking you can use both the universal belt and the ground belt uh, potentially even the stealth belt if you want the surprise factor which is always nice but uh, yeah you can choose uh, to your heart's content uh, between these four belts they're all viable uh, these planes also have bombs. You can run with two 100 pound bombs, one 500 pound bombs, or a combination of the two for the final loadout. Uh, two 100s and one 500 pound bomb. So, yeah, there is a little bit of versatility in the P40s. I also hear that in ground uh, RB coming straight down and shooting on the canopy of tanks can uh, penetrate with 50 cals. With these bombs, it can be quite a lethal force in ground RB as well, I wager. And you can go up against uh, enemy planes and attackers as well. So, interesting combination, very versatile when it comes to usage and uh, quite lovely. So, good firepower, very good ammo loads. Acceleration in this plane in a straight line is decent in a dive, it's good. You have energy retention in the horizontal being decent, in the vertical above average. It does lose a little bit of speed in the vertical, especially while rolling and stuff like that, especially on lower speeds where it has a little bit less uh, performance when it comes to rolling, but um, it's not uh, too much of a problem. Climb rate in this plane is below average though. It needs extensive side climbing to get where it needs to be. You don't want to be the focal point of attention in the P-40 too much, although it can handle itself against many energy fighters and many boom and zoomers when it comes to turning. Um, you still have to be starting, for me, in the P-40 as the highest plane if you can, or at least do your ultimate best to get to uh, a little bit of altitude and start with boom and zooming, transition into energy fighting and only turn fight when it really um, hits you, when you really can't have anything else uh, happening and you're forced into a, a turn fight. It is not a turn fighter, but uh, as boom and zoomers go, it's not half bad when it comes to maneuverability. But yeah, the plane is just uh, better used when you come from altitude and you can uh, jump on people. That doesn't go for all planes, but for me, altitude advantage, energy positioning is very important. And in this plane, with that climb rate, you need to take time for that. You need to side climb. No matter what happens in the middle of the map, you have to make an educated guess whether or not it's time for you to go to the middle of the map. Um, I usually avoid the early uh, fur balls and stuff like that because you will not be the highest plane in that first mix up with the enemy and um, you'll be in a disadvantaged position uh, unfortunately so uh, yeah side climb be smart bide your time and wait until your p40 is in the superior position and then it really starts to shine now the turn time in this plane is slightly below average but average with flaps flaps only rip off at around 670 kilometers an hour decent climb rate uh, especially maybe s somewhere above decent between 400 and 550 the ideal window for this plane when it comes to roll rate and um, overall maneuverability is thus slightly above average totally 
Um, the overheating is present in this plane, but it's definitely manageable. It's not too much of an issue. And it cools off fairly quickly, so you won't run into too much problems there. The durability is good in the P40s. It can take quite a bit of damage. It feels very sturdy and uh, very uh, absorbent to damage, let's say. It also handles the damage quite well when it comes to the flight model. So that is a definite advantage there. And um, yeah, so I, I really like it when it comes to that. Repair cost in this plane is 1381 Silver Lions, which is good, quite low. The, uh, that's the E1. The uh, F10 is a little bit more expensive. It is uh, 2135 Silver Lions. It, it seems to be also slightly better, the F10, but just slightly uh, overall. But um, it's, it's not a, a big difference. The rewards in these planes. The E1 has 392 research points. Uh, modifier and a 90% silver lion the F1 or the F10 uh, runs with a 413 research point modifier and a 105 silver lion modifier both of these are on the low side when it comes to that um, at a 2.7 battle rating there's many planes that run with higher uh, percentages so they are not ideal for collecting rewards but uh, quite good enough that's for sure now as to the usage of this plane as i said it is a jack of all trades it is decent at everything it it, it is not a failing plane at turn fighting it's not terrible at anything it uh, it handles itself quite well at all the roles boom and zooming can be quite fun in it it has quite the deep dive with the 870 rip speed uh, 780 almost red line that is all good in there so it's great at diving there's also late control stiffening in there my son goes to the toilet right now yeah nee peter ik ben nog even bezig um so late control stiffening as i said and um very good in a dive especially the later dive it the compression is not terrible so it keeps rolling in there and um, you can get the guns on target on a lot of planes. Uh, energy fighting it's also not terrible at. It's not excelling right, it's not specialized energy fighter. But it does well enough. It does well enough. Better than many planes. And if you compare many of the uh, boom and zoomers and energy fighters with the turn capabilities of this plane, they are also often uh, equal or worse than this plane. And um, that makes this plane very versatile, also with its ability in ground RB. Looks like a great plane and I always enjoy the P40s. Always do, it was great to revisit. We have Final Blow, Terror of the Sky and Bulletproof, 20,000 Silver Lions and 6,000 Research Points. I'll see you in the conclusion. Hey guys, so here we are after the match. The P40s, the Warhawks are absolutely fantastically fun planes. I really like them. They are very versatile, they can jump between the rolls easily, it makes it very nice and feels comfortable in the P40s. You know you're not excelling in any role, that is clear, but it can do everything quite nicely. And, and that is good because it gives you the ability to shift between the rolls and to surprise people out there. It has good firepower with the uh, 650 cals, quite a bit of ammo, decent speeds. Uh, quite nice in a dive the late uh, compression in the plane in a dive is also nice it makes the dive control the dive handling very good and uh, all in all there is precious few absolute downsides in this plane maybe it is the uh, climb rate and because it does take a little bit of time to set this plane up you need to be patient in a p40 you need to really side side climb you know on the side not not half to the middle you'll be out climbed by most planes uh, but once you get that setup right even if you wait i mean as you saw i had that first match i had five opponents left i was the only one left but i had the superior precision and i could play it out correctly unfortunately that bomber got one but otherwise i would have had an ace there so all in all you know it is it is worth it in this plane even though after five to eight minutes of climbing you'll only have about 18 minutes left for the rest of the match. 
But uh, yeah, that's Gaijin's fault with a 25 minute timer thingy, right? I still get, uh, can't get over that, but it is what it is. We'll work around it. Hopefully one day they'll, they'll get come back to their senses and they reinstate the hour playtime for matches. If you're new here, make sure to hit the subscribe button, become part of this community. If you are already a subscriber, don't forget to like the video, do leave me a comment, and if you really feel like helping out today, make sure to share the video with your friends and let them know about the channel.